Hi, my name is Denis Fyodorov and in this video I am going to tell about the levels of Russian language competence or proficiency. So after this video you will be able to evaluate your current stage in learning Russian, know what it actually means to learn Russian and get some understanding of the whole process of Russian language learning. First of all, there are several scales that measure the levels of Russian language proficiency. According to them, learning Russian can be interpreted uh, quite differently. In this video, I will use a scale based on international scale. In Russia, uh, there is a formal scale that we use too. It is used in certification in Russian language. It is needed for those who want to get some formal certificate. Uh, mostly you may need this uh, certificate uh, to learn in Russian universities or professionally connect your life with Russian, like to become a Russian language philologist. I have plans to create another video about this formal scale, but in this video I prefer to use this scale based on international standards, because the official one is very formal and this one is more understandable and clear. Okay. In learning Russian there are five levels of proficiency, but actually there are six levels because there is also a level zero. So let's start with it. Level zero – no proficiency in Russian language. The first level of learning Russian is the level zero. You may think that this level zero is when you don't know Russian at all. You will be logically right, but specialists uh, say that to be on the zero stage uh, means to know Russian on some level. See for yourself. On this level you know a number of isolated words, some very basic expressions. So when you are on Russian street you will be able to read numbers, uh, street signs, names and places. When being directly spoken to, you can understand occasional words, but not speech, of course. And you can write down and read Russian symbols, it means that you know the alphabet. So, to get to this level, you need to start learning Russian. To learn Russian alphabet first, uh, then start teaching yourself to read, begin forming Russian basic vocabulary. And somewhere during this process, the level zero badge will be yours. You do not need to set any goals, because this level will come on its own after you start learning Russian. So again, to get to level zero, you need to be free with all Cyrillic symbols, be able to write them down with block letters, and to be able to pronounce them, not like some barbarian that came, uh, that came down from mountains, but as a human being. Then start teaching yourself to read and learn new words. The next comes level 1 – elementary proficiency in Russian language. After becoming an honorary level 0 uh, Russian learner, the next level you will be going for is level 1. Shortly, this level can be described also as traveling proficiency, because it exactly meets your travel needs. Now you can ask simple questions and give simple answers. Native speakers will be trying to understand your mumbling and after they really try, well, they will. They will try to speak with you in a very simple manner, the same charming manner as with, as with um, babies or very old people. On this level you need to have a basic vocabulary, usually about 1000 words. On this level, if you write, you often make mistakes. So, this level is about traveling or basic needs, like to buy something, ask for direction, order a meal. You get to this level somewhere during learning Russian beginner's grammar, if you follow the standard way of learning Russian, or can also get here if you just constantly learn new words. Then comes level 2 – limited working proficiency. What is this level about? Well, first of all, you can't know everything, and your foreign language knowledge can't be deep in every field. And I mean here words, first of all, because from some point growing your vocabulary will become the main thing in learning Russian. And going broad in learning new words is the worst choice you can make. To learn properly, you need to go narrow. First, uh, this narrow approach is about learning only common words, the most widespread words of the language. 
The word fly is more important than fleet. Uh, to know the word eat is more important than to know the word gobble. Then the narrow approach expands on situations where you need to be confident in foreign language. Usually it is your work. So on the previous level we were learning basic words for basic everyday situations. Now we learn more words, expressions and other stuff. And most of them should be learned for situations you are going to be in. Profession and work is a very important part of life. And words uh, from this category are top priority. Also, if you ask yourself why I learn Russian, well, this is top priority too. And also, you must possess some amount of words and expressions for everyday situations. Working uh, limited proficiency means that your level of Russian is enough to use Russian in your work, education, common situations. Also, you can participate in basic social situations. Your accent is intelligible. You can construct sentences and it means you have learned the beginner's Russian grammar. And it is behind. This level comes to you when you complete learning the beginner's Russian grammar and possess some practice experience, have about a couple of thousand words in basic active vocabulary. And on this level you can go to get formal education in Russia. The next is level 3 – professional working proficiency. This is a very important level, because now you can say that you know Russian. I really mean that. Something like they ask you, do you know Russian? And you answer, yes, I know that language, nothing special. Actually, on this level, by universal practice, uh, specialists count how many people know a particular language. On this level, you are pretty good, can participate in most uh, conversations, communicate with reasonable ease, comprehend normal rate of speech, rarely um, grope for a word. If you make mistakes in grammar, they do not interfere understanding. Accent can be obviously foreign, but it must be intelligible. So, as you see, this level is not how you know your native language, not even close, but on this level they say that you know the language. And on this level you have a right to graduate from Russian university with diploma. So, this level 3 is a level that can be described something like you know Russian like your native language, but worse. I mean, you can do everything you do in your native language, but with less ease. Your speech uh, is more simple, your understanding is not that clear. Uh, on this level, you can't make a brilliant display of eloquence. And very important moment here is when you speak Russian, you think on Russian. So your thoughts are more simple and limited by the amount of words. And you will notice that sometimes you will be a liar, like they ask you what you ate on breakfast and you may not know words to describe the truth, so you will have a choice to be fluent and tell a lie, or to grope for a word, try to slowly expl uh, explain in other words and tell the truth. The variant with lie wins much more often. The same is with other things. You will be expressing yourself not with what you exactly feel, but what words you know mostly. Sometimes your vocabulary will let you do it like you would do in native language. Sometimes not. I am speaking about the negative stuff, isn't it? But, well, this level is good, really good. You will be able to communicate with native speakers and use Russian language as an instrument. And uh, to get to this level is really a great achievement. This level is a top level for most people who learn Russian because to get to the next level you need to connect your life or profession with Russian language. The next is level 4 – full professional proficiency. It is the next level, a top level possible for those who live not in a Russian-speaking country. On this stage you are fluent on all levels. Your vocabulary is big and, can, uh, and covers a lot of stuff. Rarely you can be taken as a native speaker. And if you speak with a low level non-native speaker, you can even pretend to be a native speaker. Your errors in pronunciation and grammar can be nothing but small. 
uh, you handle informal speech very well. So, what is the difference between this level and the previous level? First, words. Your vocabulary has grown a lot. Accent. You still may have it, but accent must be pretty good. And experience, of course. If you reach the previous level 3 and connect your life with Russian, like become an interpreter or start working in Russia, you will get to this level. Or if you are a Russian learning fanatic, you can get there too. And the main instrument to get here is to learn lots of words. When Russian becomes a part of your life, uh, common for your words will be learned on their own. It's the natural way. But if you want to get to this level as a learner, learning new words should become a part of your daily life. So let's take myself. Before shooting this video, I didn't know such words as bucket, basin and lawn mover. Pretty common words. I know them right now, but I didn't know them yesterday. Why didn't I know these words? It's because I didn't meet them in movies, series, internet, communication and my profession. So they can be such gaps for me. I know that I am weak in uh, cooking vocabulary, recipes, foodstuffs, many household words. So to know such words, I have to learn them consciously. So my work um, enriched my vocabulary dramatically in some fields, but in others I have solid gaps. So to remove them, uh, I need to learn new words consciously and spend efforts uh, and time here. Well, and the next level is level 5 native or bilingual proficiency. It is the last and the top level. There are pretty high demands for a foreigner to achieve this level. See for yourself. Your level must be the same or very close to an educated native speaker. You must be fluent as much as in native language, accepted by other native speakers, possess wide vocabulary, be free with idioms, colloquialisms and pertinent cultural references. I know that every one of you knows what idioms, colloquialisms and pertinent cultural references are, but let me explain this once more to you. Idiom is a phrase or fixed expression that can't be translated literally and have figurative meaning. Bit around the bush, caught between two stools, actions speak louder than words. If you literally translate those idioms, you can't get their meaning. Here are a couple of Russian examples for idioms. Белая ворона, white crow, вилами на воде писана, written with pitchforks on water, ни к селу, ни к городу, nor to village, nor to city, не то пальто, not that coat. These idioms translated into English literally have no clear meaning at all. Uh, they can't be literally translated. But idioms are understood by all native speakers and actively used by them. Colloquialism is a word or a phrase used in informal language. So it's a part of everyday speech, but not a part of formal speech. It is close to jargon or slang, uh, but more common and can generally be understood across age as long as the speakers are from the same geographic region. Colloquialisms are ain't, I reckon. Uh, Russian examples are vishitsa, knick-knack, yerunda, uh, nonsense, malachina, good lad. Pertinent cultural references is the cultural stuff of some language. It is like a mix of the language with customs, traditions, culture, mentality, religion. So altogether that means that to know that you must live in a Russian-speaking country, no matter how you learn the language. Uh, the top level for you is the previous level number 4. But come to Russia, uh, live here for a while to get the culture and language, way of speaking if you want to achieve this level 5. Uh, that's it about the, stage of, uh, the stages of learning Russian. I told you the bigger picture of learning Russian. I hope uh, now it is more clear for you what goals to set in learning Russian. And now you possess much wider vision uh, of learning Russian than before this video. Uh, thank you for uh, watching and bye.